Hey all, it's John again, aka Whiskey and Sound for Boilermaker Mondays. And I thought that I would do an old classic favourite of mine, and that is Kilkenny. I've been hanging to have these again. I used to smash these down like constantly. And I was thinking to myself, you know what, I picked up some Irish whiskey the other day. And what better way to do a Boilermaker than to have an Irish Boilermaker. So I am going to get my hands on the appropriate glassware, which is cocaine glassware. No other way of doing it. And uh, let the glass do its thing. Now, this is a readily available Irish ale. And it is magical stuff. And very hypnotic to watch. I love watching this thing on tap. Whenever the guys pour it for me, I'll just sit there and eagerly wait until that head just does its thing. I mean, look at it, it's just a thing of beauty, really. It is such a mesmerizing thing. And more so mesmerizing than this is watching them do the stout, uh, Guinness. So <clears throat> anyway, whilst that's prepping itself and doing its thing, um, I went down to the shops the other day. Uh, sorry, I didn't go down to the shops because we're Victorians. We're in lockdown. We can't leave our bloody house. So I have electronically gone down to the shops and uh, invested in another old favourite of mine, which is Lambay Whiskey. Now, for those of you that are familiar with what this whiskey is, it is a, a sea-kissed Irish whiskey, so triple distilled, finished off in cognac cask. Um, it is... Quite the quirky little number and amazing to drink. So easy to drink because there's heaps of... Actually, I'm going to pour it in a glass whilst I'm trying to describe it. So, um, oh, I only just cracked it open too. And it's still got that lovely sound from the cork. Love it. So, give myself a Saturday night's pour. Yeah, I'll start off with just that for now because I know for a fact I'm going to revisit that. Um, yeah, so, yeah, triple distilled, um, I, if my memory serves me correctly, it's Cavus or, um, oh, no, nah, I can't remember what the cognac is, I've, um, I could probably look it up and do it, I, I may even do that, um, I'll leave that detail in the link for you guys, um, or with the links of the beers and whatever else that I'm having now, I will leave that. Um, in the comments on the YouTube channel and I'll give like a brief uh, rundown on what this actual whiskey is. So oh, heaps of fruits um, and it's just it, it, it's not it's not overly briny but there's just that sea salty no it's not like it's an Isla whiskey kind of salt so there's no peat level on this it's just just lovely amounts of um Lovely amounts of tropical fruit and like a you know um, salt base come along, just gone, done his thing, dropped it off in the green can glass for you to enjoy. That's that's what I'm getting on this. Yeah, uh, yeah, tropical fruits, loads of apple, cream, beautiful whiskey, beautiful whiskey. And are we there yet or what? I say we are. So. Slunger for those that wish to enjoy an Irish boiler maker with me. I'm going to do the Irish whiskey first and then I'm going to go to the beer. <laughs> I love that stuff. It's so salty on the back palate, but oh, very. It's. Heaps of sweet fruits. Um, yeah, heaps of sweet fruits. Not a uh, pinch of salt. It's quite oily, and it's only forty percent as well. Like it's, it's um like I'd love to have this in cast strength. And I've heard rumours that there is a cast strength barrel program that they are doing. But anyway, that's another topic for another time. For now, I'm concentrating on this boiler maker, and now for the one that I have been waiting for. Mm, mm, mm. 
cream brulee. That's what I can get. <laughs> that is awesome. This Indian, uh, this Indian. I was just. I've, I've got a can there of Indian pale ale. Um, so I've just seen that and gone yet yeah, Indian. This Irish ale is so damn easy to drink. It's probably dangerously easy to drink, um, especially in the summer. Like I, this is second thing to water, almost. Uh, it's yeah. It's it's very. Um, there's no bitterness about it. It's just so light and refreshing. And, um, like, the only way to do it is chilled. And that creamy head on it, it just complements the... It complements what's going on in this glass as well. This is a, a killer, you know, Irish boiler maker. You could do this. You could pair this back with so many other Irish whiskeys as well. Anything that's triple distilled. Um, like, I put this back with... Uh, this would go amazing with the red best uh, 12 car strength quite easily. Um, I would love to say that it could go back with the 21 year old, but I'm yet. Actually, no, sorry, I did try that the other day. And yeah, this would probably actually work better with the 12 year old car strength because it's got such a. I won't say it's got such a bite to it, but like it is car strength. So it's got that higher ABV and. If you want this to maybe cool down your palate, uh, but um, so you could almost use that. I won't say too much of a cut, but it's oh, it'd probably fuse. It'd probably fuse between uh, a compliment and a cut. I'd say that kind of boiler maker. This is just uh, I'd say it's it's more contrast because of the salinity that you get off this. Um, it's yeah, it's. It, it, like, it's got that nice amount of spice uh, to it as well. And this just has that chill factor to it. Like, it's just an easy drinking beer, really. So, let's go uh, beer wash and a uh, whiskey rinse and then see what effect that has. Ah, lovely stuff. That is such gold. Such gold. Um... I've been hanging to have one of those for so long. I'm surprised it's taken me as long as it has. Anyway, too busy trying all those other stouts. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, the nose on this is gorgeous. Yeah, I love to get my hands on a cast strength version. Yeah, bananas are starting to come through now. So that's, yeah, like candy banana. Tropical, uh, tropical fruit. So like your... Um, your passion fruits, your your pineapple. Actually, almost pine needle. I'd, I'd probably get on the nose now a little bit. So, <laughs> oh yeah, that really just. Brought the spice all the way forward. Um, oh, and the finish on it is just amazing. Like all the fruits just got, yeah, we'll see you down at the back over there somewhere. But it's, it's left like a, not uh, an unpleasant salty feeling on my palate. It's just, it's really nice. It's just a really pleasant boiler maker pairing. Um, yeah, that one worked really well. That's, yeah. That's probably one of the easiest boiler makers that you'll come across. Um, uh, if you, um, whether you get your hands on like a, a bourbon cask, um, Irish whiskey, uh, or actually I've got the Kinahan 10 year old as well, which I may even crack that open tonight and see what that's doing as well uh, with that particular beer. You know what? I've actually got enough of that beer. I'm going to kick you to the side and enjoy you later. And um, I'm going to go grab that Kinder Hand tin. Why not? Because we're on an Irish theme, so let's do this. Let's represent. All right. You, are, you come with me. So, Kinder Hand tin. I have no knowledge about this. So I'm going in on this one blind. So, but I had quite a few Irish whiskey enthusiasts tell me about this uh, drink and they go, get your hands on some Kinahans. 
And um, yeah, so right place, right time. Scored myself a bottle. It is a. Uh, what was the bottle? It was 2019. Yeah, 10 year old. 46%. Okay, cool. So 92 proof. There we go. All right. Now, I'm um, one of those guys that rips these off. Oh, okay. There you go. Usually, I take I take mine off completely. I don't leave them on. Um, I don't know. It just looks cleaner, I guess. Right. Yep, you're good. <laughs> Ooh, okay. You are something. I love that first pour. That. Right. Lovely. Alright, so, can your hands 10 talk to me? What do you smell like? Hmm, okay. That's got similar. Oh, actually, it's got a similar proof, um, similar fruit profile to that. Take out the salt levels of that dram. It's got that same fruity, oily, uh, or creamy kind of uh, presence on the nose. <sighs> yeah, I can I can understand why one of um, one of the uh, whiskey enthusiast that I was speaking to actually mentioned that sometimes he gets a bit of leather on the nose, and I get where he picks that up. I get where he does pick that up. Um, yeah, I may even give that a bit more time, the glass, to open up and do its thing, but so far, straight off the bat, this is pretty, pretty. It's actually quite oily, very oily. Yeah, nice. All right, let's see how this one goes. Oh, that's passion fruits. Oh, that's almost like if you could put it into words, it's like a. Um... <laughs> Without it trying to sound too disgusting, it's like Pavlova served in a very brand new leathery boot. <laughs> That's probably the best way I could word it. It's it's it, yeah, it's creamy, and I understand where that leather is coming from now, and it does make so much sense. This is actually a really nice whiskey, very nice whiskey. Man, the Irish, they do it so well whenever it comes to whiskey. I'm yet to have... Oh, I won't say I'm yet to have a bad one. I've had a plain whiskey before. I'm not going to reveal their name. Um, and no, it wasn't Proper 12. And I haven't tried Proper 12. Will I try it? Maybe if it's given to me. Um, would I go out of my way and buy it? Probably not. Reviews have been enough to make me tread around those bottles and just keep moving on. So I'm not going to be in any hurry anytime soon to buy one. But I mean, people that do know me know that I'm a big fan of my Irish whiskey. So I love my red breast, my lamb bay. Um, I love Connemara in particular, my Glendalough. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to add this one to the list. That's for sure. And I love Irish whiskey um, indie bottlings as well, which I have a couple of Irish strands over here as well. Courtesy of Casa Divino, uh, that's had some crazy Irish whiskey up on one of their tastings as of recent times. And I do want to get stuck into it. So, who knows? Um, that might be a second boiler maker after this. Oh, that's gorgeous. All right, let's see how this one pairs up against this now. Oh yeah, dark chocolates. Yeah, dark chocolate, tropical fruit. Um, 
yeah, and and actually leathery. So yeah, that's really nice. Ooh, okay. That's actually really accentuated the dark chocolate. Um, yeah, really accentuated the dark chocolate out of that particular dram. So Kenny Hands 10 and Kill Kenny. So I call it the double K. This is the KK Irish Boiler Maker. <laughs> um, it's safe to say that any of those drams will easily suit this Kill Kenny Irish Ale. It's such an easy one to pair back with any Irish whiskey, which is good. So you you almost can't stuff pairing this thing up. Just say, give me any Irish whiskey and a Kill Kenny, and done. On most occasions, um, yeah, it's it, it's such a it's such an easy easy going um, Irish ale. So there's no excuse as to why you can't pair it back with anything. This is yeah. <laughs> As you can tell, I enjoy it too much, and I'd be happy to pair this back with whatever that is in Irish, let alone an Irish whiskey. So, but it's probably sacrilege otherwise to have it with anything that's not Irish. Cool. Um, now I suppose I better give my review as to which one I rather. Do I go with the the Sea Kissed Fruit Bowl, or do I go with Pavlova? In an old valley boot, actually no, a Dr. Martin's boot. Yeah, we'll call it that. A leather Dr. Martin's boot. So, have I ever in a leather boot? Sea kiss fruit bowl. <sighs> well, I make the pick. They're just as equally as good as each other. Oh, the nose and that is starting on the land bay. That's and that's a lower ABV as well too. So, that, but the funny thing is, the Kinnahan's actually drinks like it's a forty ABV too. I mean, it's only an extra six percent, but it's six percent more. So, that's such an easy drinker. This has been a very easy drinking boiler maker session. So, um, yeah, I know what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my Monday night, and um, yeah. So, once again. I'll be I'll be coming back next week, hopefully with a guest. I know I said this before, um, and yeah, couldn't tee it up. But one way or another, I may get my hands on a guest uh, to uh, basically we'll compare war stories with what we pair back, how we go about pairing things, and uh, what was our killer pairing that you know our our um, our one never to forget. So hopefully I can tee that up for us next week. Otherwise, if not, you're just going to end up putting up with me again with more pairings. And um, yeah, and just try new, new different drinks. Hopefully, um, I'm trying to get my hands on more. I'm, like, I know I've been doing a lot of um, craft stouts, and that's what I, what I naturally drink. Um, I've been having quite a few people saying, you know, uh, what about, you know, like pale ales or just... Any other everyday drink, like what would you do with a with a lager or something? So I'm gonna really try um, all of my power to start pairing back our everyday drinkers with stuff um, that I have either on offer in my little bar over there, or um, if it means I've got to hunt out, hunt around and find something to pair it back with, then I'm gonna be doing that as well. But either way, throw the challenge at me. Give me something that you're ever so curious about with regards to pairing back. So, you know, shoot me a message on my Instagram, which is Whiskey and Sound, or through my Facebook, or through the YouTube channel, or leave a comment um, in the, uh, like on the video comments afterwards, and hit me up with something. So, like, share, subscribe, support, enjoy. I hope this was a fun ball maker monday for you and i'll be seeing you definitely next week for the next round catch you then